Hello everyone and welcome back. In this portion of the tutorial series, we are going to take our low poly model that we created using retopology techniques and we're going to unwrap it so that we can take it into Substance Painter and bake that high poly sculpted detail into our low poly model. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So in between videos, what I went ahead and did is just finished up the retopo phase by adding in uh, this asymmetrical detail. Uh, something I do want to point out is in my high poly sculpt, I actually have a pretty significant uh, crack here. I didn't retopo it because I, I wanted to show you guys what it would look like um, if we didn't retopo this and you will be surprised at how much detail this was still captured So I did this because I wanted to showcase like you can go significantly lower with your retopo if need be um, Depending on your game's budget polygon budget, right? So I thought that would be interesting to see how that bakes later on but for the most part you can see I did on this side really try to um follow a lot of that that detail all right so now what we want to do is i noticed my object's not named so i'm going to go ahead and name it the exact same thing as the high poly one only i'll do underscore lp for low poly now if you're using marmoset tool bag to bake you'll want to do low and you'll call the high poly one high and that's kind of the naming convention that software package likes when it's baking. But for my purposes, I'll do LP underscore LP and underscore HP in Substance Painter. And the reason why you want to name your objects is not only is it just good practice to have an organized scene, but it's especially important when you're baking. And for something as simple as like this, yeah, it's kind of trivial because we just have the two objects. But when you're complaining, um, when you're baking complex shapes with multiple objects that are only baking on to certain parts like if i have a gun and i'm only baking the barrel on the barrel and the stock on the stock then you really want to make sure you're organized and their name your naming convention is correct uh, because it will just make the baking process a lot smoother uh but again that's like just know the more complicated <laughs> objects you make just the more important it is to have good naming conventions but even for something then as simple as this i'm still going to have good naming practices okay so now what i need to do is in order to actually bake the high poly detail onto the low poly well that information needs to bake be baked onto the low poly's textures and so we do need uvs for the low poly object However, we do not need low, uh, UVs for the high poly object because we're taking that geometry information from the high poly and putting it into the texture information on the low poly. So that's why we need to unwrap the low poly and we don't need to unwrap the high poly. So let's go ahead and look at unwrapping our low poly. So I'm going to hide our high poly since we're going to focus on the low poly. And we will start unwrapping this. So I will bring up my UV editor, and you can see here the UVs are non-existent. Well, they they exist, but they're a hot mess. So what we need to do is we need to clean that. For my personal workflow, and I, I'm pretty sure it's a popular one, uh, what I like to do is I like to select all the UVs, and I like to basically reset them and make them all uh, one UV island. So I'll select all these. I'll go to create tab and hit planar and you can see what it did is it it made them all one uv island so they're all stitched together where you see white that means the edges in uv space are not stitched so in my head i know when i use the planar function i shouldn't see any white seams unless there's an issue with my topology so let's actually zoom in here I'll go to vertex mode and we can see yep there actually is an issue with my topology I have some holes so like I said in the last video sometimes the retopo 
doesn't weld. It looks like it welds, but it doesn't. So I'm just going through oops, and making sure these are welded. So now I'll select all these faces and I will hit planar and you can see we don't have any seams now. So it's all one, one UV island. The next step I want to do is I want to start breaking this up in a way that's going to be relatively, we'll know what's going on when I unwrap it. Um, and we want to cut it up into to, uh, UV islands, different UV chunks, essentially, to kind of uh, let it to unfold properly. So, for example, I'm looking at this. I'm going to break the front off. I'm going to break probably the side off along here. I'll break the back off, and I'll break the bottom off. And this will allow me to unfold relatively nicely. So let's go to edge mode and I can select stuff in my 3D space and use these uh, UV toolkit functions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break the bottom off. And to break a, a UV seam, I'll come to my UV toolkit, have my edges selected and I'll hit cut. And what that should do is it creates two UV islands. So you can see here, it's the way it unwrapped originally, it's flat. Um, but this is this is the bottom, and we'll fix that a little bit later. For now, I just want to focus on chopping off the different parts. So I'll hit Q so I don't accidentally move an edge. Q is your selection mode. And I can stop right here because I already know I cut this seam off. All right, so I have this. So I will hit cut and if I made the selection complete it will break off these back faces into its own UV island so this one's going to be a little bit trickier because of how we retoppled that stuff in I'm going to move this to the side it's kind of hard to navigate um, uh, with it on the side so let's select here and we want to meet back up here this isn't going to be the prettiest but that's okay Okay, and I'm just holding shift if I if I didn't explain that. I'm just holding shift, clicking an edge, and then sometimes, like, if I undo. If I'm right here, as long as your loop is consistent, I can hold shift, come down here, and, like, double click, and it will select from that last one all the way down. So that's a helpful, helpful tool. All right, so now let's go ahead and cut. And now my sides, it looks like it's still connected because if I double click it, it still selects this whole island. So that tells me I have, 
one edge or maybe two edges where I didn't break it off all the way. Here it is, right here. So make sure you just cut. And now, there we go. That's what I expect to see. So these are the front faces, the kind of sides, the back, and the bottom. So once I have this, um, I'm going to use the unfold function to kind of splay these out in a nice manner. And to do that, all I'm going to do is select these faces. And I'll come to my UV toolkit. Unfold and hit unfold. And this is what we get. So where did my bottom go, though? My bottom's being weird, so let me select these faces on here. Let's hit planar. And let's hit unfold. There we go. I don't know why it did that, but we didn't forget about it. <laughs> so that's the important thing. All right, so now what I have to do is I kind of, I'm okay with it. It's kind of wobbly, but I know this is going to bake well, and I'm going to be able to do the the kind of texturing I want on it. So I'm going to live with it. This looks really good um, right here, but because we like retoppled the cracks in and stuff, it's going to unwrap a little bit wobbly, but that's fine. You'll see it will work out. So I know this piece is too long to fit but let's rotate these so I know I want this one to be kind of straighter bottom something like that So the goal is um, each one of these kind of squares is a UV space. It's a, uh, a UDIM. And so what I want to do is I want to pack everything into this one UV space. Um, right now, this there's too much discrepancy in the sizes. So what this is telling me is like, this has way more texture resolution than this because this back is smaller. So when you're thinking about texturing, it's in pixels, right? So there's a lot less pixels that I can paint onto this area than I can paint onto here. So I have a lot more text, uh, texture resolution or texel density uh, for this piece. So one of the first things I do after I chop up the islands is I make sure I snap them to the right texel density. And we can actually see that in action. If we have this checker pattern... You can see how small the checker pattern is to the side, to the front, versus the back. So a lot less resolution on the back. So pretty much we can use this checker pattern to kind of eyeball and say, well, if I have detail that wraps from the front to the side and the side to the back, there's going to be, you're going to notice some pixelation uh, probably when you get to the back. And you can actually see it here, right? Because there's less resolution. So what I want to do is make sure these are the same texel density. So I will go to my transform tab in my UV toolkit. Scroll down until I see de texel density. I'm not going to go too crazy with this. All I'm going to do is hit set. So I can make sure they're the same texel density. And this is what we get. They're kind of spread out across two UV, uh, multiple UV spaces. So an easy way to pack them is I'll scroll down to Arrange and Layout, and I'll hit Layout. And what it does is it packs them. And you can see how the squares are similar in size. So that's what we want. Let me turn off Checker Pattern because it's hard to see. So that's well and good. However, there is a lot of empty UV space that's not being utilized. So we're wasting all this precious uh, resolution, all this space. Uh, and when it comes to creating assets for the game engine, that space is super important. Um, 
because it's like wasted calculation time, right? All these there's still pixels here, even though there's no information when we paint it. Uh, it's still you. It's still reading this information. So what we want to do is make sure we're optimizing this and really packing it in there nice. So I can't really change things around and have them the same texel density. So what I need to do is probably chop things up a little bit more into more more UV islands so I can pack it better. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the sides in down the middle. So I select these edges right here. I'll hit cut. And if I move this up here, this down uh, up here. Maybe we rotate it a little bit. And let's rotate these. So notice now, just by doing that, I could probably scale these up. And as long as I'm scaling them up together, they're the same resolution. And we can fit them in that UV space. Better. We're utilizing more of that UV space. So I'll hit layout. And it kind of does a better job of packing. And this is actually pretty, pretty darn good. And... For some games, they'll like get really crazy and creative with how they pack their objects, which is always awesome to see. I think for our purposes, this will be just fine. But yeah, you can see how we're utilizing way more of that UV space than we were before. All right, so the, I'm going to call this pretty good for the UVs. Um, I think it should bake nicely. Don't worry too much about it being wobbly here. It'll be fine. Uh, we could do some techniques to go in there and really, like, straighten these UVs. Um, but for this asset, I don't think we're going to do that. So once you have it unwrapped, there's one more thing we need to do. So if we look at just the low poly object and you can see, we can see like these transitions of the polygons. Well, it's good practice uh, when you're baking an object to just go ahead and throw that into one smoothing group. And how to do that in Maya is you select all the faces, you go to mesh display and you go to soften edges. And so now you can see, uh, we got rid of those kind of drastic changes that we saw from polygon to polygon. So this is helpful. And yeah, there's a little bit more to this, especially when you get to more complicated objects. Sometimes you won't just throw like, uh, throw it all in one smoothing group. But for this purpose, we're going to keep it simple. And that should be sufficient enough. So I notice I'm getting some weird issues here. That could just be because... It's too extreme, those triangles. But let's see if I select all the faces and let me go to mesh display, set to face. Oops, let's do, um, select these. Mesh display, harden edges. Mesh display, conform. And then we'll do Mesh Display Soften. Sometimes that can help clean up UVs too. But yeah, it just looks like I'm pushing these triangles too extreme. So I should have probably had like a triangle that cut, cut across from here to here. Uh, but it's going to be so small of an issue. We won't notice it too much. So yeah, that's the unwrapping phase. I think this model is good to go. So what I'm going to do is just select it, make sure it's named, and I'm going to go to File, Export Selection, and I'll call this one Gravestone LP. And I'll do an FBX. You could do an OBJ. And for the baking, um, you want to make sure in, like, 
the high poly and low poly are sitting right on top of each other because of what's going on when texture baking happens. Uh, it creates a cage around both these objects and casts rays, um, and it looks for where the um, the high poly is and casts it onto the low poly. So you want to make sure they're sitting on top of each other. If you export something like this, your bake is going to be wrong. If you export something like this, your bake is going to be wrong. So let me undo that. Um, one more thing I probably would have done is just delete history, freeze, transforms, and then kick it out. Um, so yeah. And sometimes, uh, I think the, the high poly we export straight from ZBrush will be okay. But sometimes if you have baking issues, just go ahead and export it from Maya, the, the high poly. Um, and you can troubleshoot just to make sure. Because in Maya, you can see they're sitting in the same space. Um, so that could be something you do. So now we're going to jump over into Substance Painter. So now that we're in Substance Painter, let's go ahead and bring in our low poly object um, so we can start baking it. So go to File, New, and if you're doing Unreal, you can use the Unreal template. Uh, if you're using Marmoset tool bag, you can use the PBR metal roughness template. Um, let's go ahead and just keep it the Unreal template. So if you're doing Unreal, it's going to use DirectX um, for your normal map. If you're using Marmoset tool bag, you're going to want OpenGL. I believe that's the correct one. I might have mixed them up. But uh, that's that's important. Um, all right. So what we want to do is select our low poly, and we'll hit OK. Yep. And this is what I expect to see. So let's go ahead and bake it. And yeah, this is just like a, a nice showcase of what the low poly by itself is doing. So here you can see like why I went ahead and modeled some of that detail in to get a nice interesting silhouette. And here you can see our UVs. Pretty simple. So let's go to texture set settings. And what we need to do is bake mesh maps. I'll probably do a 4K map. Um, even if I do 2K textures or 1K textures, um, I'll bake in I'll bake in 4K, um, and we can always export those out at a lower one. But when you're testing, sometimes it's good to start with a lower one, and then up res it once you know the major issues, or once you, to spot major issues, and you can solve those, because it. Especially again, once you have a lot of objects, it's going to take it can take a lot of time to bake. All right, so now I want to import my high definition mesh. So I'll click this icon right here, grab my gravestone HP, and I think the default settings for me are going to be okay. If you had multiple objects, this is where I would change it from high to low, and I would just say HP LP because that's how I named it in Maya. But we only have one object baking onto one object, so it's fine. Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep all these settings the same. So let's go ahead and bake. And the reason why I should have named my te my material in Maya, uh, I, I did overlook that. Uh, I should have named it like grave matte gravestone or something like that. But this material is the texture set. So if for some reason you have two materials assigned to one object it will split them up into two texture sets uh, when you do an FBX so that's something to keep in mind but like I said for us it's gonna be easy and you can see already we're getting really nice uh, high poly detail onto that low poly mesh And we're just going to let it do its thing. Shouldn't take too much longer. 
So yeah, overall, I'm really happy with how that turned out. So this is the, the part that I didn't necessarily go in depth and retopo that crack. So you can see how it still baked that information and it looks pretty good. But when we look at like the angle, it's less interesting in the silhouette. So that's, again, just another example of why I went in there and gave it some interest. But if we needed to lower the resolution, we could probably put less topology in like these areas. And from afar, the bake is still going to look pretty, pretty good. But yeah, so that's the process to bake the high poly model onto the low poly. So if we hit um, B, we can cycle, cycle through the maps that it baked. So here's the normal, world space normal, the ID, which again, we have one object. We had one high poly object. The ID map is super powerful. Even if you have multiple high poly objects uh, and you retopoed it in a way so it's only one, you can use the ID map to bake color information onto the different areas of that low poly, which makes coloring or assigning materials to parts of it super handy. Um, here's the AO bake, the curvature bake. So yeah, you can see like what I meant when we sculpted that subtle detail onto the surface. We're going to be able to use this map to drive a lot of uh, detail in our, um, I think I went too overboard right here, <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to use this map to drive a lot of texture information in the next video. Oops. So curvature, position, thickness. So yeah. Got all our maps baked. So we can hit M to go back to the default material. So yeah, that's the process of baking the high poly information onto the low poly. So you do need to unwrap the low poly. You do need to pay attention to things like the smoothing groups uh, to get your bakes to come out nice. So with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video where we will look at using these baked maps and actually creating some... Pretty cool textures. See you guys next time.